Today is Friday, June 4th. We have updates about where the White House is sending donated COVID-19 vaccines and why the World Health Organization decided to rename new variants of the virus. Also, it's the latest controversy surrounding the Postmaster General. He's now facing an FBI investigation. Plus, new details about a series of UFO encounters, what's included in Twitter's new paid subscription, and where to get free donuts nationwide today. Welcome, welcome to the Newsworthy. All the day's news in about 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Lacey Evans, filling in for Erica Mandy during her maternity leave. You ready? Let's do this. The U.S. is getting closer to becoming a top COVID-19 vaccine supplier for the rest of the world. The White House laid out its framework for donating millions of shots. It said 75 percent of the first batch will go to the COVAX initiative. Remember, the World Health Organization put COVAX together last fall as a way to make vaccine access around the world more equal. The COVAX shipments are going mostly to Latin America, Southeast Asia and Africa. The other 25 percent of donated American vaccines will go directly to places in need, for example, India and Gaza. They'll be the same shots already authorized in the U.S. from Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson. Overall, the U.S. plans to share at least 80 million vaccine doses with the rest of the world by the end of this month. The White House says that's five times what any other country has promised to donate, so it's encouraging others to step up, too. No matter what, health officials say there will be plenty left over for any Americans who still need to get their shots. As of this morning, 52% of American adults are fully vaccinated. The newer coronavirus strains now have new names to go with them. The World Health Organization decided to assign different letters of the Greek alphabet to each new mutation of the virus. Until now, most people have been referring to each new variant by saying where they were first discovered. For example, the UK strain or the South African strain of COVID-19. But the WHO says that kind of language can create a stigma about certain places or people from there. And it might even make governments not want to report new strains if they think they'll be blamed for them. So from now on, the strain first discovered in the UK will be called the Alpha variant instead. The one first discovered in South Africa will be called the Beta variant, and so on and so forth. The names are going fast, though. There are 24 letters in the Greek alphabet, and already the WHO has assigned 10 of them. More Chinese companies are now blacklisted, meaning Americans are not able to invest in them. President Biden signed an executive order expanding on one President Trump issued late last year. The original order listed 31 companies linked to the Chinese government. The new one nearly doubles that. The White House says it includes Chinese tech firms that make or deliver surveillance technology that's used against Muslim minorities in China or protesters in Hong Kong. The New York Times says it goes beyond that, and China is currently ramping up its ability to spy on nearly one and a half billion people through technology. So the White House says the investment ban will keep Americans from supporting that. If Americans already have stock or other interest in the companies listed, they will have a year to unwind those investments. However, China says the U.S. shouldn't interfere with China's domestic affairs, and it could retaliate with bans on American companies, too. Stay tuned. The Postmaster General is now under investigation. The Washington Post cited sources who says the FBI is looking into political donations tied to Louis DeJoy's former business. Before he led the Postal Service, DeJoy was the CEO of a company called New Breed Logistics. Well, some New Breed employees told the Post they were pressured to give money to Republican political candidates. And then they were apparently paid back through bonuses. That's illegal under federal law. So the FBI is going to look into the allegations. However, one spokesman for DeJoy says he doesn't expect much to come out of it. That's because the Postal Service's inspector general, who looks out for any misconduct, has already investigated this issue and found DeJoy never knowingly violated campaign contribution laws. This month, American intelligence agencies are set to release a highly anticipated report about UFOs and American airspace. But it doesn't look like enthusiasts are going to get the answer they want, which would be proof of alien life. 
The New York Times spoke to some senior officials who have seen the classified report already, and they say there's no evidence of alien spacecraft. However, the report apparently doesn't offer any other kind of explanation for unusual sightings either. Intelligence officials have been looking into more than 120 incidents over the past two decades. Most came from Navy personnel. And in some instances, the objects in the sky quickly sped up or changed direction against the wind. Well, the Times says they couldn't trace those incidents back to any kind of American military or government technology. But it's not clear if maybe they were some kind of super advanced technology from another country or another planet. Of course, when the full report is released, we'll update you. More news is just ahead, but first, here's your main host, Erica Mandy, with a word about today's sponsor. Think about everything you've ever learned about getting healthy. It's a lot of information, right? And a lot of times, it's contradictory. There's the old-fashioned food pyramid or different trends that come and go and have questionable research. Well, ditch the diets that don't work and let Noom help you learn not what to eat, but how you eat in general. Noom is based in psychology and teaches you about cravings and, most importantly, building new habits. Yes, Noom's cognitive behavioral approach means you're not just losing weight, you're building the habits you need to keep it off. In fact, More than 80% of Noomers finish the program, and more than 60% have stuck with their goals for at least one year. We don't need any more rules in life, right? We want knowledge and an effective but compassionate kind of accountability. There's a science to getting healthier, and it's called Noom. So sign up for your trial today at Noom, N-O-O-M, dot com slash newsworthy. Again, sign up for your trial at Noom, N-O-O-M, dot com slash newsworthy. Noom dot com slash newsworthy. There are two new potential breakthroughs in cancer research. First, scientists say they've discovered a new treatment to help patients with advanced prostate cancer live longer. The drug has a tracker in it, meaning it can target cancer cells in the body that doctors can't see. So they can tackle some kinds of cancer that are considered inoperable. In the study, advanced prostate cancer patients who received the experimental treatment lived about four months longer than those who received only standard care. The drug maker plans to ask regulators to approve the drug in the U.S. later this year. But that's not the only new treatment showing promise. A new study found a pill helps keep certain early but aggressive breast cancers at bay. It was studied in patients with cancer-causing variants of BRCA genes who were already treated for cancer but were at risk of having it come back. Researchers found the pill reduced the recurrence risk by 42%. Already, this drug is sold in the U.S. for treating other kinds of cancer once they've widely spread. But the new study shows it could help with early-stage breast cancer, too. Twitter finally unveiled its first subscription service. It's called Twitter Blue, and for now, it's only available in Canada and Australia. For less than $5 a month, subscribers get some bonus features. For example, an undo tweet button. Also, subscribers will have 30 seconds to preview a tweet and make changes before it goes live. Then there's bookmark folders made to make it easier to organize saved tweets and more. There's no release date for American users yet, but Twitter Blue will likely come to the U.S. soon. Still, the company says the free version isn't going anywhere. After a year delay, the Marvel superheroes have finally arrived at Disneyland. The new Avengers campus opens to the public today. It's located within Disney's California Adventure Park in Anaheim. One of the most talked about features is a Spider-Man adventure ride that also works like a video game. Thanks to 3D imaging and virtual reality, visitors can fight the bad guys by shooting virtual webs from their arms. The Avengers campus will also include performances by Marvel characters. For example, the Royal Guard from Black Panther's Wakanda will demonstrate their skills, and Doctor Strange will perform magic shows. It's all open today, but people will still have to stay distanced and wear masks. The theme park is expected to lift some of those restrictions later this summer. The final horse race in the Triple Crown series is tomorrow. We're talking about the Belmont Stakes on Long Island, New York. At one and a half miles long, the Belmont Stakes is the longest race in the series. A horse called Essential Quality is the odds-on favorite to win. Fans are betting his strongest competitor will be a horse named Rombauer. He's the horse that came from behind to win the Preakness Stakes last month. But fans won't see Kentucky Derby winner Medina Spirit at the starting gate. The New York Racing Association recently banned Medina Spirit's trainer, Bob Baffert from entering any races. 
The group said it issued the suspension because several of Baffert's horses have failed drug tests over the years. Remember, Medina Spirit failed a drug test after the Kentucky Derby last month. And this week, a second test confirmed those results. The Kentucky Horse Racing Commission still needs to decide whether to strip Medina Spirit of the Kentucky Derby title. As for the Belmont Stakes, you can watch tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern on NBC. Today is National Donut Day, and several retailers are celebrating with discounts and freebies. For example, Krispy Kreme is offering every customer one free donut, and if you've been vaccinated, you'll get two when you show your vaccination card. At Dunkin', customers who buy a beverage will get a free donut to go with it, and some Walmart stores are giving out free coffee and donuts this afternoon. That's it for the main news today, but now it's time for Feel Good Friday, where we bring you one extra feel good or positive news story before the weekend. But first, this episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. Here's Erica again with her endorsement. Hey, it's Erica here, and I love the taste and feel of a home cooked meal. But to be honest, I don't always have the know how or the time to make it happen. And that's where HelloFresh comes in. I love that my husband and I can come together to enjoy cooking together without needing to think about stressful meal planning or extra grocery trips for that one ingredient I'll barely use again. Instead, HelloFresh sends us everything we need for a delicious, nutritious, and unique meal right to our door. It allows us to get a great dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes. And that convenience is even more important now as we start our family. We just recently made beef bulgogi meatballs with roasted carrots, ginger rice, and sriracha crema. You better believe that I could never make that on my own. And yet it felt like a breeze with HelloFresh. No wonder it's America's number one meal kit. And right now you can get 12 free meals, including free shipping, when you go to HelloFresh.com slash Newsworthy12 and use that code Newsworthy12. Again, go to HelloFresh.com slash Newsworthy12 and use code Newsworthy12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping. Now back to Feel Good Friday. A Florida woman is getting national attention for an unusually generous act. She donated a kidney to her new husband's ex-wife, and the surgery happened just two days after her wedding. Debbie Neal Strickland started dating her now husband, Jim, more than a decade ago. Strickland got to know his ex-wife over the years because she shares two children with Jim. Still, the two women say they were never that close until the ex-wife got kidney disease. Strickland offered to help, and it turned out she was a perfect match. The surgery was a success, too. And today, the two women call each other kidney sisters. They have since celebrated the birth of their first grandchild, and they're planning a big vacation with their entire families for this summer. And that's your Feel Good Friday. Thank you for listening. We'll be back with our special edition Saturday episode tomorrow. We're talking about van life and what you need to know if you plan to strike out on the road. Then we'll have your next news roundup on Monday. Until then, have a great day. 